that Iran decides to strike back with a bomb or a missile or something, that it was paid for by Obama with our money. So that's that kind of what drives me crazy. Yeah, uh, that, that's well, what drives me crazy. We don't know how much of what they were able to do in the Middle East and the strikes they made against American citizens and the terrorism they've executed was done with funds that we sent to them in that pallet of cash. And beyond right. that, they don't have a lot of options because they don't have a lot of friends in the world. While Russia and China are allied with them, there's a certain mutually assured destruction element that's at play here. And they don't have a lot of places they can go. If they go back to the negotiating table because of the JCPOA that was, you know, that was eliminated, um, the Iran deal, then that means they're going back in and they're negotiating from where President Trump said he he last said he would start from. They don't go in with the deal that Obama put on the table, which was a total you know walk in the park for them. So there there aren't a lot of places they can go. And now that he's announced that he's the wily beast who would actually consider hitting their cultural sites, not just their um, you know wartime areas, it makes their next steps. They have to be very calculated. And they're going to want to do things through proxies to try to distance themselves from anything that they do. But they did put out a list of President Trump's properties as if that's going to be something that they can get away with. So it, it, they don't have a lot of options. And I, it's important for us to take them seriously, but it's also important for us to be aware of where they stand and the, the options that are on the table for them. The guy who's replacing Soleimani is not nearly the cunning, you know, experienced general that Soleimani was. So we, we have to, they're going to regroup. They're going to try to figure out something to do, but they are not as powerful and they don't have as many options for trying to strike back at us as Democrats would have you think. Well, I stand next to my president, and you know what? America, the conservative American, loves our president. We love you, Trump. You're doing a great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. I, I, I think he's doing a fantastic job as well. Thank you for the call. I got to say, um, full disclosure, because you might be thinking, wow, she's, she's all in for President Trump. Yeah, I am. I like a man's man. I, I'm, I'm a hot-blooded American woman. I like a man's man. I like someone who's strong and authoritative and takes charge and would never bow down to our enemies and always enters into a negotiation with the idea that he's putting his country first. And so President Trump gets that bill. He's a flawed human being, but God has always used flawed human beings as leaders and as game changers and as history makers. So he's no different in that aspect. And I think the thing about President Trump that I'm most excited about, besides being on uh, the Black Voices for Trump Coalition, I'm on the advisory board for that. And I've also just recently joined Veterans for Trump, the advisory board for that. And those are exciting opportunities for me to contribute and try to help reelect our president. But it's also just wonderful to have someone who, in spite of his billions, is a man of the people and really cares about us. I've heard the president speak in person 10 times now. Uh, my joke to him when I finally met him back in November was that I'd been chasing him all over the country and I finally got to shake his hand and he laughed and said, really? So the president is one of those people's people. He's a man of the people. He really cares about us. Even the brain dead liberals who hate him so much, he doesn't want to see one American soldier, one Navy person, you know, sailor. No. No reservists, none of us. He doesn't want to see any civilians. He doesn't want to see any of us harmed by foreign entities. And so that's why he works so hard to reset the table and to institute the Trump doctrine so that we could be who we are as Americans, so that we can live free and encumbered. And I mean, the world is a nasty, dangerous place. And he understands that. And I think it's that disillusionment and that maturity that we see lacking so much on the left. They lack the ability to accurately assess danger and to figure out who our true allies and who our enemies are. We can make deals with anyone, but we still have to understand what their primary aims are. What are they actually gunning for? What are their goals? What are they trying to accomplish? If you can understand that when you're sitting... Celebrity megastar and viral sensation. Celebrity Christopher and Angelic Penelope Fountain going around the globe and every nation. Today in this video on January 7th, 2020, I plan on starting this video with me speaking right now about this topic in particular. Now, I love the fact that we have a country full of people 
that are just so deceitful toward one another. They want to fight anyone that's successful. They don't like anything they can't achieve, or if someone else is achieving it. Now, it's not about this president or that president. Back when Obama was a president in Wichita, Kansas, meaning when I was in Wichita, Kansas, and Obama was a president at that time, you could go into any McDonald's, any Burger King in that ghetto, and you would only see the news about Barack Obama back when he was a president. The minute that Donald Trump got brought into the presidency, in the ghettos all across America, you will notice that the McDonald's and all the establishments that I'm talking about have got rid of all of their TVs and they don't want to even put any kind of news about Donald Trump on the TV or on the radio. It doesn't matter. They don't want it. They don't want the politics going on, the news, why people are eating in their establishment. They don't want it. I understand the concept that politics does not have a place in some places in public. But I think we as Americans need to know what's going on with this country. I'm going to talk about the smaller details of what is eroding this country. But before I get into that, I plan on talking about the problems that are still not resolved. Okay? Now, Donald Trump was a president because he won. He won because he was a better man than Hillary Clinton than anyone else. If Donald Trump were not a president, we would not even know anything about him. He's a rich billionaire. He would be living his life in Mar-a-Lago, playing golf, traveling the globe, living wherever he chose to live. His show, The Apprenticeship, is no more. We would no longer hear anything about Donald Trump. I found that this president has been the best president in any country, in any history, including the future. I 100% feel that not only is Donald Trump the best president that any country could ever have, Most importantly, he's rewritten history for so many people that have faith of a better tomorrow. Now, there's no need to talk about poverty because poverty does not pay. I live in Wichita, Kansas. I have been burglarized not one time but more than four including theft of mail last year, Christmas. I'm sorry, the year before last. My mother sent me a jacket in the mail and that was stolen from me in the mail. I mean, I'm okay with identifying this to the entire globe that if I would have caught some scumbag porch pirate thief stealing my mail, there would be no need for me to call the cops because... I'm going to call the news media first. Then I'm going to call the ambulance. And maybe, just maybe, they can make the right decision from there. But it ain't about that. Poverty does not pay. This president brought so much enlightenment to people that are trying in life to make a better tomorrow. I'm a truck driver. I'm a professional truck driver. I'm rewriting history every day I'm out here achieving goals, reaching my objectives in my personal life, my daily life, and in my future. And let me tell you this. 
Donald Trump is the best president. The first thing he did was everything he talked about in the campaign. Obama can go and shake the hands of any dictator or any other, you know, person that is running any other country. It doesn't matter. He can bend over and take it in the ass too as well. Give Iran whatever they want. Fuck the American people even more. Donald Trump did not do that. He put an end to the stupidity immediately. And that's exactly what needed to be done from the start. This fucking bullshit with China. And don't get me wrong, I love my little girl. I had a Pekingese, a couple of Japanese chins. My little girl's from Japan. But I'm not going to lie to you, the Chinese in this country have been fucking the American people over for so long. It's to the point where it's almost insanity. I mean, I believe 100% that we need China restaurants in this country. But what we don't need is we don't need Chinese people that eat dogs for food. Creating dog food for my pet in this country. I am so sick and goddamn tired of China eroding this country in America. Okay, they have created robots to do the work of their own people. After all their people commit suicide for working unlimited hours. Okay, this shit don't work in life. Why do we always have to learn a hard way when someone wants to, uh, you know, do something? They have to always find out the hard way. And it shouldn't be like that. It should not be like that. Now, like I said, we don't need lead paint and walls. We don't need dog food being created by China for our pets in America when we love them so much. Hell, we don't even need anyone that doesn't even like pets in this country. If you don't like pets in this country, get out. Get the fuck out. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. This is my philosophy on everything. I live by these rules. This is my New Year's resolution in effect. I'm going to try to keep all scumbags out of my life. No doubt about it. No doubt about it this year. But most importantly, I'm not lying to you about this. I'm working on wealth protection. I don't give out loans. I'm not here to give a helping hand financially. I'm not a loan shark. I don't lend money. I don't fix credit even though I know how to. I can give you my word of advice. Work hard every day. Work for money and never quit. Because if you're not able to work tomorrow, at least you have enough money for your future. With that being what it is, this is my philosophy. Our president is the best president in this country. I cannot wait to vote for him again, 100%. I'll be the first one. The first opportunity I have to vote for him, I am voting for him to get him reelected. Now, we don't need any more Bushes. We don't need, we don't need any Obamas. We don't need Hillary Clinton. We don't need these pompous assholes that are untuned with reality and how it actually is. If they're befriending our enemy in our own country, what the hell is going to happen to this country in the future? If everything has a price, then this country already collapsed. If you go to Thailand, and don't get me wrong, I used to love Thai women. I used to love Thailand. I wouldn't mind traveling there. But under no circumstances do I want to move there. Because I'm an American. Because I can never own property in Thailand. Okay? And there is, it's a rule. It's called something like this, similar or identical. But 
if you go to Thailand as an American, you cannot buy property unless you marry a Thai woman. That's the bottom line. And if you do not marry a Thai woman, then you cannot own property. You have to put it in her name. I think it's total bullshit that this country was sold out by Obama, by all the other people that wanted to make the deal with the wrong people. Now, I think this border needs to be implemented into existence around the country. I don't need drugs in this country, even though marijuana is legal. I still hate it. How badly I'm in pain, I still don't want marijuana in my life. It don't matter if, it, if it's legal in every state. I don't want to see it. I don't want to hear about it. I don't want to visualize the shops that are selling it. Because I don't want it. Because I feel if we were not invaded by people that are just ruining and eroding this country, we would not have to put an industry into existence to fix a broken economy because we have no oil. Because if we had oil, we would not have had the BP oil spill. If we had a booming auto industry in this country, like in Detroit, portrays itself to be, or what it should have been, then we would not have had General Motors collapsing. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm familiar with the last economic crash with Bernard Madoff, Jeffrey Skilling at Enron, Houston, Texas. I'm familiar with each and everything in detail about how California was put out of electricity. I am familiar with all of it. I watch the gas prices at this pilot that I'm at. I don't know if you can see it. The price right now today on July, January 7th, 2020 would be three twenty five dollars a gallon of diesel, $2.69.9 for a gallon of unleaded gas. I think I have your full attention. And these are the reasons why I am going to be voting for Donald Trump again, to make him reelected as a new president for a eight-year term, I hope. That's what I'm hoping for. I predict him winning. And all of this pompous smokescreen of people trying to ruin the reputation of someone like our president, I think the president, Donald Trump, is going to use this as a stepping stone like I do on my daily life when low lives want to dismantle my well-being or attempt to. I use these things as a stepping stone to overcome another obstacle and put people to shame like I do. Thank you for watching this video. This is only the beginning. I'm not quite on my power trip yet. I'm just speaking from a uh, philosophical point of view here. Me traveling all over the country, I see a lot. I see the bomb cities tent cities in Nevada. California, I think, is a waste of space, by the way. They're reaping benefits from the government, just raping the government, of multi-billions and billions of dollars. Okay? Multi-billions of dollars when, in fact, the roadway, the infrastructure... The roadways are covered in filth and garbage and broken concrete, garbage and junk vehicles, and I'm telling you, debris worse than Baltimore, Maryland. And then on top of that, they're eliminating Walmart jobs with robots, based on what I've seen. They are eliminating jobs of a street sweeper with a robot, by the way, which was by far incredible, by the way. But it does not create a job. It takes them away. Um, and most importantly, you have to pay 10 cents per bag at a Walmart to bag up your own groceries. 
And that's after you check out your own groceries because they don't have a lot of people working in there. They have two lines or one line open. The rest is a self-checkout. Now, some people do not fear automation. I don't. I'll re-educate myself. I'm preparing for the future. So I don't care. Thank you for watching this video. I'm the hottest celebrity on the entire globe. It's not about the car trashians talking big like they're donating big money to needy causes. These people are fake and phony and everyone is catching up with them. Their photoshopping days are exposed. Their liposuction and vampire facials are exposed. The way they mistreat people on a daily basis and sell out their own race is officially exposed. Welcome to the new America. I am, without a doubt, the hottest, most famous celebrity on the entire globe. No royal family out there on the globe is more famous than I am. Trust me when I tell you that. Thank you.